Is Wrexham Stryker in the new Deadpool and Wolverine film? Ryan Reynolds appears to have confirmed that Wrexham Stryker Ollie Palmer is in his next film, Deadpool 3. The Hollywood star, an owner of the Welsh football club, shared the trailer on social media, writing, found the guy who killed Bombi's mom. An eagle-eyed Wrexham fan, who calls himself Beardy on Twitter, quickly noticed a man wearing a denim jacket in the background of one of the scenes, identifying him as one Ollie Palmer. A podcast dedicated to the football club, Fearless in Devotion, backed up his claim, sharing the still from the trailer along with a screenshot of Palmer, 32 years old, commenting on Reynolds' post, if you squint. Reynolds, 47 years old, commented on the podcast's post, keen eyesight. The podcast team went on to say they had verified the claim, saying in another comment on the post, I've asked him, he's confirmed it is him. The new Marvel film, which will be out in the UK on the 26th of July, brings Deadpool and Wolverine, played by Hugh Jackman, together to defeat a common enemy. Palmer appears to make his brief background appearance in the first scene of the trailer, in which Deadpool walks over to Wolverine at a bar. He's wearing a white shirt, jeans, and denim jacket, and has dark hair and a bushy dark beard. Palmer joined Wrexham from AFC Wimbledon in January 2022, a year after Reynolds and It's Always Sunny. In Philadelphia, co-creator Rob McElhenney, 46 years old, took over the club. Since then, the Welsh Football Club has secured two successive promotions, which along with the popular Welcome to Wrexham docuseries, has propelled it into the global spotlight. In 2022, Reynolds and McElhenney were honored by the Welsh government, the Football Association of Wales, and S4C for promoting the country and its language with the Dragon Award. They've also met with Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, the King and Queen and the Prince of Wales. PM of Papua New Guinea responds Biden's comments about cannibals. Papua New Guinea's Prime Minister has accused Joe Biden of insulting his country after the U.S. President implied his uncle had been eaten by cannibals on the island in the 1940s. Mr. Biden made the comments about his uncle Ambrose J. Finnegan while visiting a Pennsylvania war memorial last week. Mr. Finnegan, who had served with the Army Air Corps during the Second World War, was involved in a plane crash in Papua New Guinea in 1944. They never found the body because there used to be, there were a lot of cannibals for real in that part of New Guinea, Mr. Biden said, referring to the country's main island. Prime Minister James Maripay said in a statement on Sunday that Mr. Biden appeared to imply his uncle was eaten by cannibals. President Biden's remarks may have been a slip of the tongue. However, my country does not deserve to be labeled as such. World War II was not the doing of my people. However, they were needlessly dragged into a conflict that was not their doing, Mr. Marape said. The prime minister also called on the U.S. to locate its war dead in the country and to clean up the wreckage of war. The remains of World War II lie scattered all over Papua New Guinea, including the plane that carried President Biden's uncle. Perhaps, given President Biden's comments and the strong reaction from Papua New Guinea and other parts of the world, it is time for the USA to find as many remains of World War II in Papua New Guinea as possible, including those of servicemen who lost their lives like Ambrose Finnegan. The theaters of war in Papua New Guinea and Solomon Islands are many and littered with the remains of World War II, including human remains, plane wrecks, shipwrecks, tunnels and bombs. Our people daily live with the fear of being killed by detonated bombs of World War II, Mr. Marape added. There appears to be no record of Mr. Finnegan's death being the result of hostile action or any indication that cannibals played a part in the inability to recover his remains, according to the U.S. Defense Department. Military records show he was killed when the reconnaissance plane he was in crashed in the Pacific Ocean off the northern coast of New Guinea in May 1944 after engine failure. The rift comes as Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese began a visit on Monday to Papua New Guinea, Australia's nearest neighbor. I'm very confident that Papua New Guinea has no stronger partner than Australia, and our defense and security ties have never been stronger, Mr. Albanese told reporters before departing Australia. After a five-month hiatus, 
NASA's longest-running spacecraft is back in communication with Earth. NASA's longest-running spacecraft, Voyager 1, is sending information back to Earth again for the first time since November. Scientists have managed to fix a problem on the probe, which was launched 46 years ago after five months of silence. On the 14th of November last year, Voyager 1 stopped sending usable data back to Earth, even though scientists could tell it was still receiving their commands and working well otherwise. It was first launched alongside its twin, Voyager 2. The pair are the only spacecraft to ever fly in interstellar space, which is the space between stars. The Voyager probes send back never-seen-before information about our galaxy. Since they blasted off in 1977, they have revealed details in Saturn's rings, provided the first in-depth images of the rings of Uranus and Neptune, and discovered the rings of Jupiter. Although their cameras are switched off to conserve power and memory, they are still sending back information that would be impossible to get anywhere else. With all this data stuck on board and the spacecraft more than 15 billion miles from Earth, NASA scientists needed to fix the problem remotely. The team at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California confirmed in March that the issue was with one of Voyager 1's three onboard computers. That computer, called the Flight Data Subsystem, is responsible for packaging the data up before it is sent back to Earth. Within the computer, a single chip containing some of the computer's software code had stopped working. Without that code, the data was unusable. The engineers couldn't pop over and fix it. Instead, on the 18th of April, they remotely split the code across different parts of the computer. Then, they had to wait to see if their fix had worked. It takes around 22 and a half hours for a radio signal to reach Voyager one and another 22 and a half hours for a response to come back. On the 20th of April, the team got good news. For the first time in five months, they were in contact with Voyager 1 again and could check the health and status of the spacecraft. Now, they'll adjust the rest of the computer so it can begin sending back more data. Voyager 2 is working normally and heading towards a star called Ross 248. It'll come within 1.7 light years of it in around 40,000 years. Voyager 1 will almost reach a star in the Little Dipper constellation in 38,200 years from now. We aren't going anywhere. TikTok vows court fight as new U.S. law threatens to ban it. TikTok has promised a court battle over a new law that threatens to ban it in the U.S., with the app's boss saying, we aren't going anywhere. President Joe Biden approved the law that states the platform will be blocked if its Chinese owner, ByteDance, does not sell it within nine months. U.S. politicians are worried the company could share user data with the Chinese government, despite repeated assurances from TikTok that it would not. The bill was approved by the Senate on Tuesday as part of a $95 billion aid package for Ukraine and Israel. Mr. Biden signed it off early on Wednesday, with TikTok's boss swiftly hitting back in a video on the platform. Rest assured, we aren't going anywhere. The facts and the Constitution are on our side, and we expect to prevail again. This unconstitutional law is a TikTok ban, and we will challenge it in court. We believe the facts and the law are clearly on our side, and we will ultimately prevail," said Chief Executive Shozi Chu. The legal challenge could argue a ban would deprive the app's 170 million U.S. users of their First Amendment rights to freedom of speech. The law could also face opposition from TikTok creators who rely on it for their income, while China has previously said it would oppose a forced sale. The use of TikTok by the federal government's nearly 4 million employees on devices owned by its agencies is already banned in the U.S. However, there are limited exceptions for law enforcement, national security, and security research purposes. Senate Commerce Committee Chair Maria Cantwell said the move to force TikTok's sale was not aimed at punishing ByteDance, TikTok, or other companies. Congress is acting to prevent foreign adversaries from conducting espionage, surveillance, maligned operations, harming vulnerable Americans, our servicemen and women, and our U.S. government personnel," she said. <laughs> Fashion designer, jailed for smuggling crocodile handbags into U.S. A celebrity handbag designer whose products have been used by Britney Spears and on Sex and the City 
has been jailed for smuggling crocodile handbags into the U.S. for fashion shows. Nancy Gonzalez, 71 years old, admitted recruiting couriers to carry as many as four products each on commercial flights from her native Colombia to the U.S. for New York Fashion Week, among other high-profile events. Gonzalez, who was arrested in 2022 in Cali and later extradited to the U.S., was sentenced to 18 months in a federal court in Miami on Monday for breaking U.S. wildlife laws. The handbags, made from the hides of caiman and pythons bred in captivity, were worth as much as $2 million, prosecutors said. But the designer's lawyers said each skin cost only around $140. Sometimes, she failed to obtain the proper import permits from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, something backed by a widely ratified international treaty governing the trade in endangered and threatened species, the court heard. Holding back tears, Gonzalez told the court before sentencing that she deeply regretted not fully complying with U.S. laws. She said, from the bottom of my heart, I apologize to the United States of America. I never intended to offend a country to which I owe immense gratitude. Under pressure, I made poor decisions. Under Taj. Salma Hayek, Britney Spears, and Victoria Beckham are among celebrities who bought Gonzalez's carefully crafted handbags. Her work was also included in a 2008 exhibition at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. In court, her lawyers played a 2019 video of top buyers from Bergdorf Goodman, Sachs, and others praising the designer's creativity, productivity, and humanity. But prosecutor Thomas Watts Fitzgerald said the retailers must be regretting they were ever put up to that, and if they heard it was presented in court, they would cringe. They have their own brand to protect, he added. Mr. Watts Fitzgerald, who compared Gonzalez's behavior to that of drug traffickers, said her activities were all driven by the money. Her lawyers pleaded for leniency for the woman, who, they said, created the very first luxury high-end fashion company from a third world country, which later competed with industry giants like Dior, Prada, and Gucci. They also argued that only 1% of the merchandise she imported into the U.S. lacked proper papers and were samples for New York Fashion Week and other events. Prosecutors had been seeking a stiffer sentence of 30 to 37 months. But the judge said he was taking into account the nearly 14 months she spent in a Colombian prison awaiting extradition. She was ordered to begin her sentence on the 6th of June. John Lennon's long-lost guitar, discovered in a loft. After 50 years, will be auctioned off. A guitar used by John Lennon in the recording of the Beatles album and film Help is going up for auction after being found in a loft. Believed to have been lost, the 12-string acoustic guitar had not been seen or played for more than 50 years before it was rediscovered in the home of a British couple. It is now going up for auction, where it is estimated to fetch between $605.013 to $807.100. Auctioneers believe it could set a new world record for the highest selling Beatles guitar. The Hootenanny model, made by German firm Framus, was used by the Liverpool band in the 1965 Help film, specifically in the scene when the group perform You've Got to Hide Your Love Away. It was also used during the recording sessions for its only love and I've just seen a face in girl, along with the rhythm track for Norwegian Wood, played by George Harrison. Finding this remarkable instrument is like finding a lost Rembrandt or Picasso, and it still looks and plays like a dream after having been preserved in an attic for more than 50 years. To awaken this sleeping beauty is a sacred honor and is a great moment for music, Julian's, Beatles, and auction history, said Darren Julian, co-founder and executive director at Auction House Julian's Auctions. It is believed the guitar came to be in the possession of Scottish guitarist Gordon Waller, known for being one half of the pop duo Peter and Gordon, who later gave it to his band's road managers in the 1970s. It is not the first piece of Beatles memorabilia to be rediscovered. In February, Sir Paul McCartney was reunited with his 1961 Hofner bass guitar, which he used on songs such as Twist and Shout and She Loves You. Julian's Auctions has previously sold another Lennon acoustic guitar for $2.4 million. Ringo Starr's Ludwig drum kit was purchased for $2.2 million, 
and a Ludwig drumhead bass used on The Ed Sullivan Show was auctioned at $2.1 million. The Hoot and Annie guitar will go up for auction, along with the guitar's Maiden Australian-made case, as part of Julian's Music Icons two-day auction on 29 and the 30th of May. Also being sold at the auction is an Adam Clayton stage played and owned Rose Sparkle Fender bass guitar used at the U2 Las Vegas Sphere shows, which has an estimate of $50,000 to $70,000. Tina Turner's Versace dress, worn during her 1996 to 1997 Wildest Dreams tour, and Amy Winehouse's black Fendi gown made for the opening of the clothes shop during Paris Fashion Week are also up for auction.